Hello YouTubies, this is King Scrab and we're going to have a slightly different video than usual. And I have done a video similar to this in the past and uh, it was it was quite popular back then but that was on a different channel and uh, you know I've had new thoughts since then. This is going to be a rather basic video in that regard because I haven't done any uh, scripting of this video, it's just a bit of a loose cannon. But I think I can talk about this in a in a philosophical way that's uh, good for anybody really uh, that's not me blowing my trumpets but there you go anyway we're going to be talking about the big bang in time so let's just say <laughs> you know for argument's sake that this uh, bit here is the pre-universe before the big bang so we can call that <laughs> before the beginning yeah oh, beginning right so I'm typing this out before, while I'm doing it. Yeah. So before the beginning, right? So this is all the matter that will ever be in the universe, at least in this universe. And let's just say that anything here, yeah, anywhere, even here and here, is what we would call the void, nothingness. It's empty it's there's nothing there all right so the void okay now as for time time can only exist in this manner inside the pre-universe inside this ball now it's not necessarily going to be a ball i like to think of it as pure energy rather than matter because i don't think matter was made yet so it would be more likely to be an electronic electronic electric charge so to speak so this would be positive and this would be negative because you know all the matter in the universe is in this space here uh, that that's uh, how can a poet it's not necessarily that way but i'm just saying that's how i think of it you know nothing is negative because there's nothing there and uh, everything is positive because there's a lot of matter and stuff in there but of course as i'm saying this is energy rather than anything else now let's get back to time all right there is for whatever reason a belief in academic circles etc that there's a big ticking clock in the back background of space so for instance even in the void people would think oh right there must be a ticking clock that's telling me it's 10 at the moment 10 a.m in the void of nothingness right which everybody who is watching this video will know is plain nonsense because even einstein would agree with me here that time can only exist within matter if it really exists at all because we're talking about the illusion of time however um the illusion of time or the concept of time does exist within this space here at least static time i would call this zero the beginning zero so if it's static matter or static energy it's not doing anything so because it's not doing anything time is not moving and that's how i like to think of the big bang so you got this uh, space here where there's no time going on so there's no passing moment at this moment in time so to speak and there's nothing going on in here because it's static now once this stuff starts to expand outwards i mean it's going to be hard to show this in a diagram because i'm a rubbish artist All right so it's it's going to start expanding and uh, some people call it a big bang some people call it an expansion which i think is a better explanation for energy but with energy anything can happen you know it could, it could be a big bang uh, not necessarily we'll hear it but it could be a big bang of energy pure energy which would just be as good um and i think energy would actually make the whole universe i think we are actually made of energy i think all molecules when you look go deep enough are made out of bits of vibrating energy that creates all the particles in the universe that's called string theory by the way so you know people might want to look that up at some point however right so as i said before and i think all of you will agree on this point that time can only exist within that space within this space here the pre-universe and because nothing's happened at the moment time can't exist now once this explodes 
the perception of time will start to exist, at least in everybody's mind, because things are starting to happen. History is beginning to happen. So in that regard, it has a history. It's happened, so therefore we can say it is, in a concept of time, time. But I want to show you something else now, right? And I hope I can get this right the first time, because every time I try this, it doesn't seem to work out well for me. So let me just wipe the screen for a second. All right, that looks pretty good. And oh, we'll go fill it. Now, what I want to do is, I want to create, oh, not this again. It's, right, I want to create a cubic meter of something. I want to do a measurement because people keep on argument arguing that uh, if time doesn't exist how come it can be used to measure things right well i'm going to measure something here let's call this a cubic meter right so there you go cubic meter yes. Ooh, there we go warm oh bloody hell yep let's just call this one one meter right so all the sides are one meter so i'm not gonna go any further than that because it'll take forever yeah so this is a cubic meter of what exactly now if it's a cubic meter of water i'll be measuring something if it's a cubic meter of soil i'll be measuring something if it's a cubic meter of uh, me minced up i'll be measuring something however let's call this a cubic meter of well nothing okay the void right so is that measurement a existence within itself have i measured something the answer is i've measured the space in the void of course but is it actually an existence is a possibility of an existence uh, which would actually you know create more confusion because people say how can the universe exist well how can the possibility of existence exist then you know i could ask that question so that is nothing at the moment there's nothing in it and it may contain nothing for all time at least in that region of nothingness therefore i have not measured anything i have put a measurement on something that doesn't even have an existence all right now let's go back to time People say, well, if the clock is actually moving, what exactly is it measuring? It's not measuring anything. It's just moving because of the, the devices within it, the mechanical devices that cause the clock face to tick. And in relevance to the universe, it does have an existence in a way, but, but it's only in the concept of the human mind. It is related. The clock is actually related to the interaction between the earth the sun and the moon right and uh, you know if you had a 24-hour clock face you will find out that the earth spins about a thousand miles per hour all right it's also around about 24,000 miles right 24-hour clock face 24,000 miles all right now, of course, they split it up between day and night, so they, they split the clock up into 12 hours, but that's another thing. But the clock itself is related. It's timing the relationship between the Earth and the Sun. That's all. And the Moon. That's all it's doing. That's its main measurement. That's its main mathemat mathematical equation. It's got nothing else to do with uh, anything other than that relationship. But that relationship can be compared to me doing nothing, to me walking around, to me jumping up and down on a chair, to me killing insects or whatever, or to me making stupid videos, I suppose. I sometimes make that videos, I sometimes make videos like this. So that's another thing. But uh, the relationship can be compared to that. So, I mean, is it actually measuring time? The concept of time, definitely it's measuring, but that doesn't mean that the time within itself is an actual existence. That's what I'm trying to get here. Because if you have time, you've got to always explain what happened before. If there's such a thing as a big ticking clock in the vacuum of nothingness in space or in every particle or in every single molecule, you've got to answer the question, what happened before? All right? 
all the time every single time even before nothing existed uh, before anything existed you got to ask how did it happen what happened before that well what happened before that well can't we go a while before that and find another universe that was created well maybe it can uh, maybe you know history can store information like that but from what I can see there was a moment of creation and before that there was a void uh, there was no energy in the universe and I think the confusion comes because people believe there's a big ticking clock now if you take the if you just say clocks and digital watches are not really measuring what you deem as the passive moment but the relationship between the earth and the sun and the moon then you start to get to grips with uh, the fact that time is an illusion it's been many professors who have said the same thing many academics have said the same thing and even Einstein in a way has said that the passive moment can only exist within matter so outside matter it doesn't exist because you're not measuring anything so you know maybe you feel the passing moments of time but certainly the void doesn't feel anything <laughs> you know so that's one way of looking at it and I'm sorry about this as being a bit of a ramble but uh, I think it's an interesting philosophical discussion that uh, people might feel is of interest to them uh, perhaps we can have a debate about this at some point but I'm definitely going to make a better video about this yeah so even academics and professors have argued that time doesn't exist. If you look at the movie Saw, for instance, those horror movies, the, the main villain says time is just an illusion. So it's gone through, our, even Hollywood has questioned the relationship of time. But we have so many movies now saying that you can travel back and forth in time. And I think some of the professors are warming to the fact that they want to appeal to the masses you know to make money or whatever and to say oh time travel is possible etc and indeed you know the passing moment which is uh, how particles relate to each other which is the illusion of time does exist all right i call it i call it energy you know energy is always moving and changing but the passing moment uh, does exist but it's not in relation to a ticking second you know, that's another thing I, I dislike about this uh, time arguments with passing seconds and one millionth of a second, one trillionth of a second. You can go back and back and back and back in those figures. You can take that 0 0.0001 to infinity, right? So when does a second actually finish? You know, if it's uh, to infinity, it never finishes. So the passing moment uh, is always, it's always the moment. It's never the past or the present. Well, it's always whenever in time it's always now all right and what's past is just uh what was before i mean uh, so in that relationship uh people can say time exists but i'm not the only person who's come up and said this sort of thing i mean i did say it years ago before many people even bothered to put anything out there on youtube in fact i think i was one of the first to actually say it if not the first but I certainly wasn't one of the first professors or a um, uh, philosophers to say it. Uh, thousands of years ago, people have said the same thing. In the past, they used to use those sand things. Do you remember those where you turn them around and they used to compare races with those and they say, well, you've got to finish the race by this time, etc. Uh, otherwise, this person wins and they compare the... Uh, sunglasses etc you know you know what I mean and then uh, they used to use water buckets to measure it so this ticking clock thing is just a human invention the the second the digits is how people think so they decided to put that sort of measurement on a ticking clock all right because it's math mathematics but the numbers the universe doesn't give a crap about what we call a second it doesn't really give a damn it doesn't think like that. In fact, it doesn't uh, work like that at all. The, it doesn't work by the clock. It works by relationship of energy. That's how it works. Energy exchanges and uh, changes in energy. That's how, that's how we work. That's how life works. So I thought this would actually be an interesting discussion. Um, I'll, I'll probably finish the video there because I, I haven't got 
too much to say on this at the moment but I hope to make a new video in the future to talk about it a bit deeper because this is just a basic video that I think people might find interesting and if you do leave a comment down below and uh, we probably can get into a better discussion about this so I'll see you guys sometime in the future All right. and remember there's no such thing as a ticking clock in the background of space and even even if you think you know the clock is actually measuring something and I've had people actually argue with me about the clock saying well if it's not measuring anything what's making it move <laughs> I mean that's one of the most ridiculous arguments I've ever heard it's the battery it's energy that's making it move it move that's all it is it's nothing to do with time in fact you can put more energy into it and change the mechanics of it make it move even faster that doesn't mean time is increased if that was the case we could travel forward and backwards in time quite easily we just influenced the way the mechanics of the clock work anyway thank you for watching